A rocket is a vehicle that produces thrust by way of action-reaction where all of the propellant is carried on board. This is the rocket formula. It means that the change in velocity of a rocket is equal to the velocity at which the propellant is expelled times the natural log of the ratio of the initial mass and the mass after the propellant is expelled. Furthermore, the efficiency of a rocket is measured in terms of specific impulse, which is the amount of time in seconds that one pound of propellant can produce one pound of thrust. It is calculated by dividing the velocity of the propellant by the acceleration due to Earth's gravity at the surface. When you graph the rocket formula based on propellant, you see that the curve flattens out. As a result, there is a diminishing return that results from adding more propellant, such that all rockets have a maximum change in velocity that they can achieve regardless of how much propellant the rocket carries. However, when the rocket formula is grafted with regards to specific impulse, the line is straight. This means that a rocket's efficiency is the most important factor in how fast a rocket can go. Solid fuel rockets are rockets in which the fuel and oxidizer are mixed together in a solid grain. This is the simplest type of rocket since it requires no moving parts. However, once lit, they cannot be shut down and have to be allowed to burn out. Control of the burn comes only from how the grain is packed. Liquid fuel rockets are rockets in which the fuel and oxidizer are stored in liquid form in separate tanks and then combined and ignited in a combustion chamber. They are easily controlled by varying the propellant flow and are the most efficient form of chemical rocket. Hybrid rockets are rockets in which the oxidizer is stored in a tank in liquid form, but the fuel is in a solid grain. They have much of the simplicity of solid fuel rockets with the controllability of liquid fuel rockets. They are the safest type of rocket but tend to be low in efficiency. Ion rockets are the only non-chemical rocket actually used in space. It uses electrical power to accelerate ions to high speed. As a result, they are highly efficient, that is, they have a high specific impulse. However, they are extremely low in thrust, typically the thrust is measured in ounces, or grams. While there is no theoretical limit to the thrust of an ion rocket, the thrust is limited by the power available. Nuclear rockets use nuclear energy to heat their propellant. They are more efficient than chemical rockets. Now, while such engines have been built and tested, they have never actually been used in space. Staging increases the total delta V of a rocket by boosting the upper stage or stages to a higher starting velocity. Types of staging include no staging at all, which is a single stage rocket. Stack stages have one or more upper stages on top of a booster stage. Small boosters strapped onto a larger core stage strap on boosters of equal size to the core stage. These usually use a cross feed of propellant between the boosters and the core. And a side mount, which has the advantage of being able to have upper stage engines running at launch. However, it is a more dangerous position than, than having an upper stage on top of a, the booster. Space Shuttle spent 30 years as the U.S. manned spacecraft, 1981 to 2011. It is still flying as of the making of this video. It has put more people into space than any other spacecraft. The Space Shuttle uses a side mount rocket design with smaller strap on boosters. Saturn V is the U.S. rocket that took men to the moon. It had a near-perfect flight record in that all of its launches succeeded. These were 10 manned and 3 unmanned launches. The main problem with it was expense. The Saturn V was a three-staged stacked rocket. The Vostok was the first rocket to put a man into space. Vostok used small strapped-on boosters on a core with a stacked upper stage. It was essentially the same rocket that launched Sputnik, but with an upper stage. While the Soyuz was originally designed to go to the moon, it has been the Russian manned spacecraft for over 40 years, and it is likely to continue to be used for the foreseeable future. The Soyuz rocket uses small strapped-on boosters on a core with a stacked upper stage. Its lower stages are essentially the same as those of Vostok and Sputnik. Here is the Long March 5 carrying the Sun Tzu spacecraft. This is 
the Chinese manned launch vehicle and spacecraft. The Long March 5 rocket uses small strap-on boosters on a core with a stacked upper stage. Both the rocket and the spacecraft are based at least partially on the Russian Soyuz. This is the suborbital space plane called Spaceship One. It was the first private suborbital manned spacecraft. It made three suborbital space flights in 2004, winning the X Prize. And it has served as a prototype for the passenger carrying Spaceship Two. Spaceship One is air launched and it uses a hybrid rocket. This is the Falcon 9 rocket, just seconds from launching the first functional Dragon spacecraft into Earth orbit. The Dragon is the first private orbital spacecraft. Both the Falcon 9 and Dragon spacecraft are built and operated by SpaceX. They're being developed under. NASA's COTS program. The Dragon is the first spacecraft launched into Earth orbit and recovered by a private company. And it will likely be the next U.S. spacecraft to carry a crew into orbit. It is capable of carrying up to seven people. The Falcon 9 rocket uses a single booster with a stacked upper stage. In conclusion, rockets carry all of their propellant on board. As a result, they work great in a vacuum. And because they do, they make spaceflight possible.